going to show two minutes of clips from... Behind the Smile, the story of Fano Hodel. What interested me first was the story. It was an extraordinary story. She was given away as a baby. See for yourself. Your dad is Negro. There was never a time in my life where it wasn't about the color of my skin. Instead of just you as a person. Her mother suffered from alcoholism and became abusive when drinking. when she was 11 years old. On January 15, 1947, a woman walking her baby found a mutilated body laying on the side of the road in the Crenshaw District of Los Angeles. Placed on the top of the suspect list and where all roads and fingers pointed to was Dr. George Hodel. Her life was so intriguing the movie was made of it. After an eight-week shoot with two days left until the film was complete, production was shut down and the film was confiscated. And through it all, her peace came from the help of angels. Entry. Suspense. Compelling. Unbelievable. And all true. Behind the smile. The story of Fama Hodel. This one attracted me most because the story was so rich. I'm now 60 years old, 
growing up at that point, black people treated me like I was the alien in the mix. White people treated me like I was living with cockroaches. I learned how to lean on angels. People were so cruel in that time in America. It just was so not okay with me. I was going to find a way to make a difference. I learned how to lean on angels, the metaphysical ones, and the human ones. I had a lot of kindness around me, but that time in America was just cruel and ignorant. And once again, I just, my whole obsession in life was, dear God, use me for good. Let me point people to their hearts. Living with an alcoholic mother was not easy. A drunk is a drunk, regardless of the race. The mystery around my giveaway was ever present. I was always questioned about my racial origins. I was given the name Fauna Hodel at birth. Mama had my birth certificate. Mother listed Caucasian. Her name, Tamarneus Hodel. Father simply stated, colored. Name withheld. I was born in San Francisco, St. Elizabeth's Hospital. I had so many clues, but yet so many mysteries. Growing up, Mama told me I could never change my name and that I could, and that she could pick up the phone anytime she wanted and call my grandfather. It was just, my black family had a nickname for me, Pat. I was teased a lot. And at times it wasn't very pretty. I was called White Patty. So there I was growing up with this nickname, Pat, and then my birth name, Fauna, and I didn't know who I was. I, I didn't speak the same. I was just a lost soul. I had tons of love around me. My grandmother from my family that raised me loved the ground I walked on and taught me that God and God's angels would always be there for me. All these years later, I can truly say that all I've ever had is faith that I learned as a little girl from the people that loved me. But the ignorance of the time was just ever evasive. I started a journey early on. Who is Fauna Hodel? Who is this mysterious grandfather? And why wasn't I darkening? You know, I was given away under the, actually, pretense. I would find out years later that I wasn't really mixed. But that's a long journey on how I got there and find, found that all out. A faceless woman would always appear to me in my dreams telling me, that I would find her, and there, there were so many mysteries to solve. I grew up feeling like Nancy Drew. I could really relate to those, to that, to all the books. I read them endlessly. <clears throat> I knew I had a fascinating book within me, and I promise you, even as a little girl, I, I, I knew that there was a reason for it all. I had been placed in that setting and that I was going to be used for great good on this planet. I'm still working at it every day. I would get to the point where I would find my birth mom. It was just a long journey on how I did that, and that is in my first 25 years that Rick so wonderfully helped me document. After at age 25, I got really serious about one day I was going to make a movie. We actually did the material first. The manuscript was written. I would draw to me Audrey Hepburn's son, and I actually met someone who gave me millions of dollars. We actually, or not me personally, but my film project, we made a movie. We had to change all the names to protect the guilty. It would turn out that when I met my birth mother, some of the things I found out, I was given away due to an incest trial. I found out my grandfather was involved in the Black Dahlia murder. Imagine, I think I'm going to go meet Doris Day or someone. <laughs> Not. <laughs> so as things kept being layered upon me to keep my dignity and to keep my soul intact, I kept staying, following that compass within my heart, knowing that God had a purpose for me and what could I do to use my life for good. That movie, as I stated, that we, we did make after changing all the names to protect the guilty, 
it actually was stopped with two days left of filming back in 1991. So imagine, you know, millions of dollars held up. A young Korean who understood the pain of racism helped me make that movie, and we were both stopped dead in our tracks. So here I am, all these years later, I kept telling my story to every human being that would ever hear me, and Jennifer, when she invited me out to lunch, knowing that I was involved with a philanthropic magazine, I told her my story, and that's why I'm here tonight, because she felt it worthy of sharing with you. My dream is to actually take all of this and do something powerful with it. Recently, actually about a year and a half ago, I met um, a very well-known filmmaker. I'm not releasing her name yet because I've been stopped so many times along the way, but I actually signed a contract with her, and this is an award-winning filmmaker, and together we decided more than another feature film, not saying I'm not ever going to do a feature film, but we're developing a long-running television series. At least that's the focus, you know, we're going after that. We're working on a pilot, and the stories are will be all geared around the murder, the intrigue, the giveaway, the cover-ups, but the end result will be the spiritual aspect of it all. Today, all these years later, I have two children. I had my first daughter when I was only 16, a biracial child who really was, who is mixed, and my youngest daughter is 33, blonde, blue eyes, different father, and my children represent the color of love, so who I am and why I'm here tonight is to share my story that really don't judge a book by its cover. All these intense things that I've shared with you tonight about me and my life and what you've seen really are not me. Who I am is a soul on this planet striving to make a difference. So with all of that, what I'd like to do is just allow you, I'm more an interactive person, is just Ask me questions. Can, how can I, what can I share with you that you'd like to know? Why, yes. why was the movie stopped? Well, years and years and years ago, I act, the mystery around my grandfather, first of all, I had my birth certificate, and I, from about the age of 12, started researching. I would study my birth certificate. I knew which hospital I was born. I would ultimately, um, find my birth grandfather, George Hodel, who lived in Asia. And that's a long story of miracles that showed up in my life. And actually, when I first call I ever got from him, he asked me, oh, I, uh, he asked me, he said, well, why do you want to meet your birth mother? And I said, well, it's like having a book, you know, with a fascinating cover, but yet when I open it, the pages are empty. And he sort of laughed, I remember, on the other into the phone saying, oh my God, you could never, you know, um, embarrass her or hurt her because I had said if it would endanger her lifestyle in any way, please don't tell her. So as the years went on, I was always writing this grandfather. Guess what? I mean, I'd never, I mean, he never, he had me followed and that's all part of my story and it's all part of the mystery. He, I was writing him as if he were some long lost relative that was one day going to realize that I was really special. Little did I know I was planting seeds for someone who would come and have me shut down. He, he was the one that was involved in the incest trial. Is, is, can any of that film be released even if it's not finished or is it? You know, that's since nine, the film was stopped in 91 with two days left of filming. I actually have you know, I, if you ask me over the past several years what I've been doing, I probably couldn't tell you much other than trying to save that film. <laughs> I finally got to a point where I had to let it go, and I'm clear that the right perfect people will show up. And because all people were saying of Alfre Woodard, I mean, imagine that Alfre Woodard, Charles Benton, Jill Claver, Tess Harper. Her work was deemed Oscar award-winning material, which I'm sure you can even see in that short performance performance. I haven't been able to move the mountain off of that back off of that back yet or but I know one day that film is worthy of being saved. That's why we started this documentary because the clips that you saw are I thought well I can't I haven't been able to save the film yet and the truth is 
it wasn't the story that I really wanted to tell. It was a string of the story because the filmmakers were so afraid of the incest and Dr. George Hodel. By that time, we were, when I said we were stopped to protect the guilty. So somewhere that film is out there being hidden and the Directors Guild, and I have a lot of footage though, but the Directors Guild of America actually knows all about this project. It's one of, people call it the most famous film not released yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any more? I'm, yes. I'm confused. Um, the Black Dahlia murder was your father or your grandfather? Well, my grand. I'm praying. I'm right, right. I'm praying my grandfather. There's a lot of mystery around my who is my father. My my birth mom. First of all, I met her actually in 1974. After a year, first I found my grandfather, and he had said to me in that conversation, he mentioned that she was in Hawaii, and in my little world, I was still living in Reno, Nevada at the time, the product of my father was a shoeshine man, my mother was a maid, and people didn't just live in Hawaii, they vacationed in Hawaii. So when he mentioned, when George Hodel mentioned in that one phone call I got from him that she was in Hawaii, it never dawned on me, as I said, she lived there, and I would find her. About a year later, something in me on my, in my Nancy Drew energy, you know, followed that string. Oh, Hawaii. And I found her. I called off the operator, you know, do you have a number for a Tamar Neas Hodel? And just like that, mm -hmm. you know, I really got her, I got the phone number of my birth mother. So, sort of interesting. <laughs> and and uh, following up, I'm still not exactly no, sure. No, got it. Um, so, is there a chance that your grandfather is your father? Is well, I'm, a, I'm asked that a lot. When I met, and I, my birth grand, my birth mother, when I met her, I went to Hawaii to meet my birth mom. And first of all, she'd only told me that I wasn't, I wasn't mixed. That she had made that story up. Now imagine that was. I wanted to be black. I wanted to belong. I wanted to be a part of my family. I actually kept that a secret for many years as though that were some terrible fate, you know. And she also told me at that point that it she she had been declared a pathological liar to get her rich father off the hook. But you know, they actually pay offs all sorts of stuff and that's Vanity Fair has even written about my birth mother and, and this story, right? So she told me that my father was an Italian guy that, this is intense su subject matter all the way around, but who had raped her right after she was released from juvenile, after being declared a pathological liar. So, you know, I don't know, but I hope not. I, I'm me, whoever that is. <laughs> so. Um, I've read about the Black Dahlia, but I really don't know very much about it. Can you talk a little bit about sure. it? Sure, sure. First of all, when I went to Hawaii also, not, not only did I find out I wasn't really mixed, but that my mother had been involved in an incest trial with her father, which was, you know, and to answer your question, I thought she was going to tell me that was my father and I was ready to drop dead from, <laughs> imagine, like I said, I think I'm going to meet Doris Day or someone and all I'm getting is more intense information by the moment. So... And my birth mom went on to mention that her father had been investigated in the Black Dahlia murder. Famous unsolved murder of mystery. Right. And young starlet who came to Hollywood to be somebody and ended up in the wrong hands. And based on what I know about my own Nancy Drew research and my uncle who wrote a book, um, The Black Dahlia Avenger, interestingly enough, Steve Hodell, who wrote that book, A Homicide Cop, I had only met three times. My film had been stopped since 1991. Fast forward, I'm working. I'd sold art for years and years and years. You know, while I was saving my project, I needed to earn a living. I was working for Thomas Kincaid in a little Thomas Kincaid gallery. In with what? And remember, I, did I tell you that my mom, my birth, my, and I only say black and white so you understand who my family is, but my black mom had told me as a little girl I could never change my name because she also said because one day I was going to inherit a lot of money, which is 
it's going to be from my story. It certainly wasn't from them. <laughs> but anyway, as I was sitting in that gallery that day, in would walk this older gentleman who would, you know, I extend my hand and I said, I'm Fauna Hodel. I swear to you, he says, I once worked a murder case on a Dr. George Hodel in a relation to you. He was the head detective of the Black Dahlia case. So, <laughs> the, yeah, the book that Steve Hodel wrote, my uncle, whom I'd only met three times in my life, actually, I'm now a part of his story for delivering the detective that tied in George Hodel directly to the case. If any of you remember, Steve Lopez of the LA Times did a big uh, story on Steve Hodel's book, wanting to, to um, say it wasn't true. And it was a two-page article in the LA Times. And after he, he read that chapter, I'm in the final thought print right after the epilogue, the story. Steve Hodel had was finished with his epilogue. And, I'm, and long story short, I'm full of stories. That's why my long-running television series is a great way to go. <laughs> but after, and I'll wrap this up, but after, um, take me back to where I was. Steve Lopez. Steve Lopez in the LA Times actually, because of that interaction with Walter Morgan, the detective that came into my gallery, went to the LAPD and found those missing transcripts that nailed George Hodel to it. And all that's in um, Steve Hodel's Black Dahlia Avenger. So my goal is, is to bring justice to Elizabeth Short as well. It's like the, my little girl vision, but one day I wanted to use my life for good and to actually help that soul <coughs> really declare who really killed her. So I think it would bring peace to the to many people. Thank you.